Can you tell them what we're uh, what we're doing here? All right. All right. Yep. Yo, guys, what is going on? Rudy Ray TCG back at it again. And I got with me four guests today. I got Grant Hayes, Nick Moffitt, Jackson Paulson, and Malachi Sparks. So uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? We'll start in that order. Grant, Nick, Jackson, and Malachi. Okay. Hey, guys. So my name is Grant Hayes. Uh, I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I've, my first competitive season was 2015-2016. Um, my biggest notable, like, r most recent thing right now was uh, I made top eight at the DC Open. Uh, Dallas is my second, like, regional of the season. And I'm excited to get there. Uh, yeah, I'm Nick Moffat. I've been playing, like, on and off for a while. Um, best placement is uh, top uh, 16 uh, uh, regional. Um, Dallas is going to be my second this season. Haven't been able to play much at school, but hopefully going to get back at it. Hi, I'm Jackson. I've been playing for almost four years. I uh, started playing competitive in the 2017-18 season, uh, and I lose win ends. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Uh, I'm Malachi, and I've been playing since about um, 2012. Uh, last year was my first competitive season, and my uh, notable accomplishes are... Uh, Collinsville top 32 um, and San Diego second. All right. Uh, Nick, I think there's a little bit of echo coming from your side. Could you lower the volume on your computer a little bit by any chance? Uh, All right. And before we start, I'd like to uh, thank my sponsors, Rock Games and also Guardian Gaming TCG. Use code Rudy10 for 10% off at Guardian Game TCG. And uh, yeah, so. Let's get right into it. To start it off, we're going to be talking about the biggest deck on the market, as expected, Turbo Dark. So let's get some opinions and some cards that uh, are notable in this deck that people should be looking out for. We'll go in the same order as... Okay, that. okay, so Turbo Dark definitely, like, definitely is just the best deck. I think it really has a solid target. We all just kind of know it's the best deck, I feel like. Like, it has... Like, in the past, I feel like for decks like Picaram, like, you kind of know what to expect with it. And Dark, like, we still have an expectation while lists are really similar, but it just has so many options available. Like, you still have all the big tag teams, but in addition, you have things like the Mew and, like, the Baby Guzzlord and stuff. So I think um, you can't really go into this weekend saying, okay, I'm going to lose to Dark, but, like, beat everything else. So I think you have to consider mm -hmm. that really heavily. Yeah, I think the I think the deck will probably be about twenty percent of the meta. It's overall very solid. Um, I think you should definitely be playing um, the Baby Girls Lord and another notable tech is Sudowoodo, which really helps in the mirror and also against Zoro Garb. And I think any deck I think any deck that um, can play Sudowoodo should be for those matchups. I think Turbo Dark's probably gonna be the best deck going into the room. And a lot of people are gonna be playing it. You, um Mostly newer players or people unfamiliar with Expanded just because it hits hard and fast. And there's a lot of options in the deck. You know, uh, Guzzlord, Umbreon, Darkrai, Sunless Run, Tutu, Weavile, and Sableye, Tyrantar. And you have to kind of find out about your opponent's deck when playing against them. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, I played Turbo Dark today at a cup, and my god, I hate the deck. It is, yes, it's the best deck, and I understand why, but it feels like you can either hit the best hands or the absolute worst with the deck. Um, Pseudo Wudo literally cripples it so horribly that I don't, I don't understand why people don't play it more, because it's just mm -hmm. one card that almost auto-wins the match. And, uh... There's just so many things that people have put in just to be able to counter the deck. It just seems, yes, it's very popular, but it's easy to counter that I've seen. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my opinion on it. Uh, I had a good time with it. It's a fun deck to play, but just sometimes it bricks. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I feel the same way. Um, I feel the same way. A lot of times, like, I'll draw hands when I'm testing against the deck, and it's just, like, dark patches and energy and, like, no battle compressor or ultra ball, so I can't really yep. do anything. Um, I'll definitely, I definitely won't be playing the deck this weekend, but it, I acknowledge that it's very strong. Wait, I oh, want to yeah. jump back. Yeah. So high I, I, 
I feel like Dark is like I think we're like we're gonna see a lot of newer players and a lot of people who aren't as familiar with Expanded pick it up because I think it's it's a lot easier to just go like all right Dark Pulse Star like do all of your stuff than it is to try to plan super far ahead. I think like I don't think a lot of good players I guess are gonna like, try to play it because I feel like you want more options with something that you're playing. I feel like Dark is a deck where like you can have just kind of those brick hands and it's very dependent on if you just run hot. And I feel like a lot of people won't want to pick up a deck like that and they'll want to pick up something that's a little bit more skill based. So I think I don't think we'll see a lot of really good players playing Dark. All right, so uh, moving on to the next deck we're going to be talking about is the one that just came off uh, winning the last expanded regional, which was Zorgar. Um, obviously, losing a notable card in Lieutenant Surge in the ban, and uh, I think also red card's pretty notable. Uh, how do you think this deck is positioned moving into the new meta? We'll, um, we'll think... switch up the order this time. We'll go uh, Malachi, Jackson, Nick, and then Grant. All right, so uh, Zoro Garb has a lot of bad matchups, like really unfavorable matchups. And the way the deck wins is very high rolly at uh, Garbotoxin into one, it's or into two. It's really just loses the game until you're into in a spot to lock your opponent out. And yes, that's really strong. But the way Zoro Garb works, where then you continue to take prizes afterwards, is not as strong in this format. When there's decks like Turbo Dark and uh, Reshi Rom and Ultra Necrozma that just speed so fast ahead against you that it doesn't matter that you win them to one, because by the time that you've won the game, they've drawn out of it. I, I'm, I really like Zorgarb and it's one of my top choices right now, and I don't think it's that good though. That's just from me playing it a lot before, and. I think it gets hurt a lot by Pseudo Ludo, people trying to run that for Dark. And it struggles early game, trying to set up Zoroarks and stuff. And if people can just kill the Zoroarks and stop their momentum, then all the times the deck will fall out and not be able to keep up. Yeah, so I've actually been talking to Ian a lot, who um, won the tournament with uh, Zorgarb, and he said the deck right now is very meh. Um, its matchups aren't great, and losing both Red Card and Surge... Um, hurt the deck a lot. Yeah, pretty similar. My only, like, real Zorgarb experience is playing it at a challenge, and even in that, it felt, like, really underwhelming. Like, I would either just not set up or set up a little too late, and I feel like you have to do so much now that you kind of have to spread the deck a little bit too thin to do what you want to be doing, like, all the time. Like, I think low pony counter game is, like, a good combination, but it's, it's like, kind of hard to get to. You don't really need it for a lot of things. So the deck has to spread itself a lot. And I feel like you're not doing something super amazing anyway. Like, I think the game plan mm -hmm. of just going, like, like end toxin isn't as strong anymore. Mm. The deck definitely punishes bad players, but I think as long as your opponents, like, can set up and attack you without playing too many items, it's not super hard to beat. Yep. Uh, I think all of those are very valid points, so uh, we'll be moving on to the next uh, deck. The one that won the previous Expanded Regional, which is a Grau, obviously um, lost a very notable card in Marshadow. Um, so how does this affect the deck moving forward, and do you think that um, enough people are going to be running techs for cards like the Burning Shadows Bioplume as to where the deck will be unplayable? Uh, We'll start with uh, Grant, because I think he has something he wants to say about it, because of the way he's okay. uh, looking so, over yeah, there. We were talking about this a little bit before. So I think that the version that JW and like the rest of them played, I feel like like in the way that they built the deck with Stevens and everything, they built it very much like... And he's gone. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So... So, in short, I think the deck is really bad, and I think the way they built it for that event was very, very good, and they knew, like, the deck was well-positioned for that, but I think looking forward, mm -hmm. the surprise factor is gone. The deck doesn't have a lot of raw power anyway, because they're playing more answers to Plume, and I think that shell, like, I think Agro, like, as a whole is fine if you build it differently, but I think that shell is really bad. Um, I think people will still probably play it. Like, you get the Plume, you said, and, like, that's fine. But I think you don't, uh, you don't really have good answers to Zoro Garb. Um, you don't, you definitely don't be dark. Like, 
anymore. I feel like you lose to a lot of things, and they were like lucky to get as far as they did with it. Because I feel like even with like good matchups they had, I don't think the deck is very good as a whole. At least that shell. I think other versions of Agar are probably better. I think Agra is in an absolutely horrible position right now. I think it was just a great meta call for Richmond, and that's why it won the tournament. But right now, you lose to what I think will be the uh, like the three most popular decks: uh, Turbo Dark, Guardian, and Zorgarb. So that I don't know why you would ever want to play that deck in this format right now. I don't I'm, think. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I don't think Eggrow is that well positioned. I think a lot of decks naturally have answers. It's like mm -hmm. Turbodark running Weavile, Guardian having uh, Aromatis, and Zorgard being an evolution deck, and Mewtwo running Hoods. I think it has to rely a lot off of Item Walk and Plant and just hope that sticks here put in enough mm -hmm. so you can take six prizes. So, in my mind, I am. So far, all the decks that I've tested for the event don't lose to aggro at all like it they almost all auto it and it's literally one card that you could put in most lists to make the match an auto win not stealthy hood but almost every deck has a card that you could put in there to make the match favorable gardevoir has aromatis zora garb is just built to beat it in most ways and uh then turbo dark has the one one we buy line that just clears it up like it, it's very easy to find space for something to put in there counter it. If and most want. of the decks are playing it already naturally. Yeah. Because yeah, they're good cards already. Yep. Yeah. I think a lot of stuff takes like collateral damage going into this weekend. Like stuff like Sudowoodo yeah. and Weavile are just like, really damaging. Mm -hmm. Alright. Moving on to uh, the next archetype. Uh, and probably one of the other biggest archetypes in the room that we're going to see is Guardian. Um, obviously this deck is inherently strong but uh a lot of people have mixed opinions about this deck so we're gonna start it off uh in the malachi rotation this time so we'll see what you gotta say all right so uh i played guard of war at um portland and uh i i had a good time but i lost to turbo dark twice and turbo dark is by far the worst match of the deck you beat zoro garb and you beat a lot of other rogue stuff but you won't, you won't beat Turbo Dark. Like, you can try, but the match is just so horrible that there's almost nothing you can do to fix it. I don't, I don't think Guardian's that well positioned. It doesn't hit hard enough, and it has to stick your opponent with labs and power plants and hope you can just heal whatever damage they did. And I just don't think that's strong enough to win a tournament. Maybe to get some points and hope you get lucky that your phones don't draw well off of plants, magical miracle. But I don't think you're going to have too far of a run. All right, I'm going to offer a contradictory opinion. Um, I actually really like Guardian right now. I think um, with low puff, I think Dark is close to 50-50, maybe slightly unfavored, but I think you take a lot of good matchups other places like, um, like Ultra Necrozma and um, other things like that seem like very easy matchups. Mewtwo um, has trouble dealing with all your plants, things like that. I, I just like how um, bulky the deck is, and it seems pretty decently consistent to me. Like, all you really need to get going is, like, two Guardians and an energy. Yeah, I think it's decent. I, like, I think Guardian is cool, and that you can kind of deny resources and keep healing, but I think at the end of the day, I'd rather be doing something a little bit more offensive, and I think that's probably why it struggles with Turbo Dark, because, like, your healing doesn't matter when they're just one-shotting you, right? And so I feel like you you definitely have your good matchups, but I wouldn't want to play something that's not super offensive in a meta that I think is going to be really diverse. You don't really know what to expect. For sure, for sure. All right. So uh, the next deck we're going to be talking about, there's a lot of decks, so we kind of got to roll through everything here, <laughs> is uh, Lucario, because uh, apparently this is coming back now because of all this egg row and dark. So what do you guys have to say about Lucario? We'll do the, the other rotation, the ground one this time. 
Uh, so okay, so I think Lucario started because of the Iowa Marathon. I think we can take a lot of stuff from that and kind of apply it to what we think Dallas is going to be. But it started because there was so much Turbo Dark at those cups apparently that Lucario was like a viable choice. And I think mm -hmm. you should you should beat Turbo Dark enough that you can probably say like that's a good a, like probably in you know, an auto win matchup or very close to it um i i don't know if you beat anything else is the issue i think you probably struggle with certain things like i i don't know if your zoragar matchup is even that great um but i i think there will be people who will take the risk of hitting like nine five weak decks and just play it i don't think it's i honestly don't think it's that bad of a call but i don't know if i'd say it's like the most well positioned at least right now you also lose to Mew really hard and i don't know if i'd do that yeah <laughs> Am I up? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the deck is decent. It's yeah. It has very polarized matchups. Like you're gonna beat things that are weak to fighting. Um, you're obviously gonna get uh, slammed by Mewtwo, and you seem like probably fifty-fifty versus everything else. Maybe slightly worse. Um, the deck could do well if there's enough dark in the room. Zorark, you're probably slightly favored, but not much. I probably wouldn't play the deck, but it could be an alright call. I think the deck's, like, okay. I don't think you're going to have a good run in the tournament with it. Uh, you only really beat Turbo Dark. Your Zorgar matchup is kind of sketchy with Toxin in, and they have Trash Lance with a one prize Psychic Attacker. And I think the only other deck it has a decent matchup against is Doll stall because it can one shot stuff for one energy with landers and spread. All right, so uh, in my mind, Lucario is a uh, it's very bad. I played against it in Portland, and the person I was playing against in day two uh, said that the dark match is actually 50 50. It's not an auto win as it would seem because they can just laser the sashes. Oh, uh, yeah. And then they just one shot the Lucarios. So it, it, in the end, it just ends up being a. Well, he said it was a 50 50 match, and he played the deck, played against Turbo Dark uh, like four rounds, and he lost to it twice. So I, I don't understand how it. I understand it beats Turbo Dark. It should have a favorable match, but it just doesn't. And I think there's better fighting decks that you can play instead of Lucario. That's just. That's how I feel about it. Uh, I need, like, right. sparkling or something instead of the sashes. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Moving they do on only the... Yeah, they do only have two laser, but they can find them pretty easily. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what he said the issue was. All right. All right. Moving on to the next archetype. Uh, I'm going to put these two decks into the same kind of category because they are kind of relatively the same deck. Uh, my N Night March and Vespaquen. Um... Both kind of run off the same engine of get as many Pokemon as you can in the discard pile and hit big. Um, do you think this deck's in a decent spot for this tournament? Or uh, do you think the baby Guz thing will scare them off? We'll uh, do the Malachi rotation this time. All right. So uh, I've been testing a lot of Reshiram. Um, the deck's okay. I've decided not to play it at this point. But... Everyone I've talked to with Reshiram is running Oricorio just to fix numbers on Turbo Dark. And there's that, so that's pretty scary. Just God forbid you hit one of those. And um, the Guzzlord is just horrible. You play against Turbo Dark, they get out Mew and take two prizes, and you kill the Mew, and then the Guzzlord takes another two. At that point, the game's over. Hmm. The only real I, issue I see with those decks is Guzzlord, honestly. I don't think any I don't think yeah, many yeah. people are playing Oracle or Karen or things like that right now. Um the decks hit hard and fast. I'm personally a fan um of them. I'm not sure. I feel like they might be kinda out of class by now with how much damage you need to hit to take KOs though, so I'm not sure. I haven't tested it in the new set, but I tested it during the Portland format. And its Turbo Dark matchup felt very 50 50 back then. But now, oh, now they have Guzzlord. Yeah, now they have Guzzlord, which they can kill a Shaman with that, take three prizes. It doesn't seem that good. And I don't know if I really want to walk into Dallas Regional State versus a 50 50 to Turbo Dark. And I just don't think it hits high enough numbers against stuff like Guardian. I don't think its Mewtwo matchup is 
good either. I think Noivern hurt. And you have to find your Ranger and Plants to deal with Jirachi while they're just taking knockouts every turn. Yeah. Pretty similar to what Jackson said. I think you have a lot of raw strength, which is good, but I don't know if your raw strength is that great. You know what's expected? Yep. All right. And apparently, I think I forgot Mewtwo, did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. that's actually so, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk <laughs> about that one now. All right. So, uh, we'll start with Grant, I guess. Um, solid. I know you, a lot of people are kind of saying it's kind of predictable as to what Mewtwo is going to do every turn, but I think they still have a lot of options with stuff. Like, uh, Distort into Calamitous Slash is really good, and then Lost Boomerang is really solid. Um, Mega, being able to copy Mega Low Pony turn one or turn two is, like, very solid. Um, I think I think we're going to see a lot of people pick up the deck because it's, it's shiny. It's oh, still kind of new at this point. I think you just have a lot of solid options into what you want to do every turn. So I, I think the deck is solid. Uh, yeah, I think I think the deck's very good, um, but I think you have to know what you're doing in order to play it because you have so many options. Um, so you kind of have to know the ins and outs of every matchup and decide what approach you're going to take for every situation. But I think the deck is solid. Distort's super good. Um, you can use that and kind of cripple your opponent's setup if they don't have much going on. And then you have some strong attacks to take one-shots. I think the deck gives you a lot of room to outplay your opponent with all the options you have. You can do really cool stuff with Absol to take instant knockouts with Calamity Slash. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's Darkrai matchup is that great, but I don't think it's a bad matchup. Maybe like 60-40 in Darkrai's favor. Uh, distort early on can really hurt them and stopping them from being able, being able to laser dead end. And I think it has a close Zorogar matchup. With, but you can draw well with Marowak and Snivy Sword and hurt them with Lopini. And also, if you're on damage change, it's good in that matchup. So, I think uh, out of all of these, Mew Mew has the most favor, the most even matchups overall without being high rolly. I feel like it's consistent. I feel like it draws well. And I feel like that all of the matches are very favorable for it, uh, if not 50 50 at the end. Uh, it has one bad match, which is Guardian, but that is very... It, it, it's winnable, and yeah, it, it's winnable. So. I think um, notable things to um, mention are, is that the deck gained uh, strong cards in Guzma Hala and mm -hmm. Lopa. So for Turbo Dark, you can play like a one or two DCE and then use your Guzma Hala to search them out uh, along with uh, the stadium and then take a big knockout if, they're, if they commit too much to their board to try to kill you. Yeah, that that's true. Um, and also, a lot of lists I've seen recently have been cutting the Lost Boomerang. Um, in instead of uh, playing that, they're playing like the Celebi Venusaur tag team mm -hmm. to do kind of the same thing, but take more knockouts, I guess, mm -hmm. early in the game. Yeah, uh, that one I'm which, not sure about because I think that yeah. one I'm not sure which was better because for uh, Venusaur and Snivy, you do have to commit the DC and the Stadium, um, but you do get like more spread but with lost boomerang it's a free attack and they also go to the lost zone so they can't like rescue shetcher for their guys back so i think there are merits to both and i haven't settled on which card is better so that's actually another reason i uh, don't like night march is because of the fact that uh night march or bees is mewtwo just destroys both of those decks with the spread abilities that it has and mm -hmm. they, they can't keep up because you're taking like four or five prizes on your first like three turns yeah. They can't set up. It's as simple as that. All right. So I think my, uh, Mime could also be a valuable tech for decks to play um, to slightly Mime help the Mewtwo match up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like, think like, if they if Mewtwo yeah. goes off, they can like kill the Mime with Distortion Doors and um, with Absol, but that's pretty unlikely, I think. So yeah. that could definitely help you if you think you have an unfavorable Mewtwo matchup that you want to fix. Yeah, I agree. Mime is like, a good tech. Yeah, I think going into this weekend, like, Mime and Pseudo, if your deck can play either of those, like, you should be playing. Mm. Any of those yeah, are both very good. I agree. Good. All well, right, uh, and... you don't need Mime if your deck's, like, if you're playing, like, a strong oh. deck, but if you're trying to set up, you want Mime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like it's All right. 
So the last deck we're going to be talking about is uh, kind of all the stalling control archetypes in uh, in it's one. What about all the Oh yeah, and that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We'll start with stalling control and do Ultra Necrozma after. But okay. I don't really want to talk about Ultra Necrozma. That deck's bad. All right. Go ahead. Uh, we'll do the Grant order this time. I think. Okay. Um. So I'll I'll answer the latter of those first because I'll I'll separate stall and control. They do different things. Uh, I think control is really bad. Losing surge was like very significant. Like not even just for your combos or whatever, but just to set up. Uh, the only way you can really control someone's hand and expand it is like with the old Miss Magius and then trying to Mars them in like Magnezone. That's really bad. That doesn't work. Um, simple as that. I think stall definitely is like the best way to try to just win games. Like when you sit down, know you're going to auto win something if they don't have an answer. Um, the the thing that I've talked about with people is that even like good stall people, like like I know James Langley and some of his, his friends when they played the wall deck in Richmond, like they've even kind of said there's not really like a good answer for dark anymore. Which I think is an issue, but I think you have solid answers for everything else. Like Pyro and Hotchkar are still very good. Um, I think if you can figure out how to beat Dark consistently, the deck is solid. I think right, the one so beach is I probably. Played... Like... Oh, what was that? The beach is probably like the thing that would turn people away from it. But if you had access to a right. beach for it, like the deck's probably fine. Right. So I yeah, played Zorg um, Control in some regional last year and got 17th and this was before all the cards came out that got banned like uh surge and um chip chip bisex and the deck still worked very well your worst matchups were like turbo decks like pikaram and um rayquaza at the time which dark is kind of similar to so i'm not sure that the deck is super good right now i think control is dead as an archetype i think the formats evolve too much to where you need the tools like reset stamp and surge and chip chip that were banned to be able to keep up with them. But I think stall is interesting. I think it has good matchups across the board except for Turb Dark, and you kind of just have to hope you can captivate and pokey puff them and get like a shaman or Dedenne on board and stick in the active with something like Snorlax. You can't well, stick shaman. shaman. You, can't, you can't even get shaman because they can just sky return. Yeah, shaman. Yeah. They can sky like, Yeah, so like Dedenne. Yeah. You need Dedenne like, or Egg. Dedenne is like the only card that that works with. And then you have yeah. to kind of hope that they don't have an escape rope like Sunlist have been running. Yeah. And then they can just dowsing it back and if they took knockout. That early, seems kind of... very not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it said that's your only. How many... It's How many like dark decks are playing escape rope? Because I haven't really seen any. There's, it's like a thing in dark. It's not like a common thing, though. Yeah, I haven't seen any list playing it. I don't really see the point of it. I would not play escape rope in dark. It's for shock stuff like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think those decks are popular enough that it warrants the spot, and it doesn't even make you win. Yeah, like, um, so with stall. The reason you wouldn't run escape rope is because of the fact if you're running a spot just for a stall deck, that means you're going to hit someone who's playing a deck with Tropical Beach. So that means you have to hit someone who can afford that. That's true. That's another thing. Like, I feel like, like yeah. we can kind of talk. And it doesn't we can talk about shock. Though. Like, shock is similar. And I feel like those decks are, like, fine. Like, if you're playing a beach deck, you're definitely probably going to do well. Because I feel like a lot of people, like, naturally just will not account for it. Because they, like, there's really no reason to. You're only gonna hit like you're gonna hit one or two beach decks in the whole event. So I yeah, think let's like, say those one. decks will do. Gonna hit one. Yeah, like I don't those even think you're gonna hit one. There's exactly yeah. Of people in there. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> also I think yeah, like I feel like either your deck beats it or it doesn't. Like shock has defined like auto wins and auto losses, and I feel like stall does right. as well. Like if you're so, playing Zoro Garb, great, you're gonna beat them anyway. <laughs> so uh, in my mind, with uh, the stall and control. Stall is is okay. Control is awful, and then mill is the way to go because decks are just going through them so fast. You're just running yeah. I saw deck. Durant list. That Durant kind of interesting. Yeah, they keep showing up everywhere. The only thing you have to worry about with Durant is uh, Mew Mew. And prizing. Yeah, prizing, yeah, yeah, prizing. But <laughs> overall, most of the matches with Durant are fairly favorable because you just run them out of cards before. They've taken all their prizes. That's how the deck works. So I feel like you have to yeah. play something aggressive stall. So with Zoro Control, uh, in the list I've been testing, I was running um, 
the mallow lana and uh like five egg not five four eggs so just every turn i'm able to via seeker for not mallow lana mal um misty, misty yeah misty to mm. do that and against turbo dark there was uh one game i was testing online where i gx three turns in a row so mm-hmm. it happens it's, it's not hard to that's... do uh, when you said yeah, five there, I thought like you were out like Geist. No, 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 sorry. I didn't, I, I misspoke. It, it was four in the list. I like Geisler, but... Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is online. This is online testing. I can't even get them all in there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, cool. like... yeah those, those are definitely both decks I want to look at. Zoro, uh, Zoro Control with uh, the heavy Articuno GX focus and Durant. Yep. All right. There's something you should look out for in my mind. Yeah. So... The last deck for real this time. Yeah. There are way too many of these guys. All right. Ultra Necrozma, I think, is the worst deck. There are more decks, just not popular, yeah. Yeah. We could talk about dolls, too. But, no, uh, we're we not going to. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Ultra right, Necrozma. Yeah. You got this. Grant, you got this. Ultra Necrozma, best deck in the world, obviously. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I played zero games with Ultra Necrozma, but I played like a decent amount against it. Um, I think the Octillery version is way better, at least in theory, because like the issue with the deck is that you're you're a Garb deck, but you also have to discard cards every turn because of like Guzma Hala. Garb's deck, Garb decks like don't draw a lot of cards anyway, so I think it's hard to make that work. I'm just kind of end flow in the game. Mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. I think you need one, the uh, so really good. What's up? I think you need the artillery. Um, otherwise, you're just like gonna miss attacks, and it's not gonna go well. But yeah, I feel even even that, then your deck loses pretty easily to Faba, um, or just and if you're not playing that. I think the deck's a glass cannon and has too weak of Pokemon in terms of HP. And it gets hurt by in needing to find all these pieces. Even if you're running the Octillery version, that hurts your setup more early on. Running more evolution Pokemon because you also have to run Muck. And I think it just gets hurt by itself. You don't even need to tech for it. It just falls apart. I think your Dark matchup is probably like okay though, right? Probably. No. I'm pretty sure they be good. Okay. I thought it was, someone was telling me the Dark's like not that bad. Maybe no. Yeah, I forgot about yeah. Guzzlord. Just go in and you lose. Yeah, yeah. Guzzlord makes Garg so good. Like, it was already good before, and now they got that card. Yeah. Right. Another deck we can touch on is Peterom. It actually got top 8 at the last regional. Alright. If you want to. I feel like Kika's actually not that bad. So I didn't All say right. anything about Ultra, but it's got awful. Don't play it. Just walk Sorry. away. It loses to literally everything. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pikaram, the last last deck. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the decks there. Yeah, I'm looking through. I'm not really seeing anything else. All right, Pikaram, the last Archie. of the last. Okay. It seems okay. I have not, I don't know. It seems okay. It seems, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems okay. It seems like a I'm just not sure there. why you would play it yeah, over thanks. Dark. So, yeah. I have a question. What does it beat? Um, it's the same thing as Turbo Dark. It, it it's a, does it, though? It's probably just a solid... You got you Bolt probably... Blitz and uh, Tag Bolt. Oh, wait, wait. No. I have another deck to talk about. Um, what? <laughs> uh, Archies, actually. Yeah, I was going to mention Archies that. Good? It seems no. like They do the have that new card that lets you discard three. I think it makes your deck more consistent, which is good. Oh, the Dust Skull? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't like, tested it. I probably should. But... You keep sending it to me. I'm, I keep theory, telling you it's make, not good. In theory, it makes the deck better. It's not good. I don't think I Archie's don't itself, itself is good. I don't like, think Pikaram's good. Yeah. yeah. Pikaram and Archie's both bad. All yeah. right. So, we're going to end it with the last question here. What is your favorite rogue pick going into this region? Uh, we'll do the Malachi order because I know Malachi's got a really good one that he sent me the other day. Uh, so this one is just—it's it, a lot of fun. If you want to have some fun at this event, but you might do well if you hit just Turbo Dark, you're gonna have a great day. If you're gonna hit just Zoro Garb, you're gonna have a great day. Uh, Metacham—it just 
run through so many of the things in this format. Nothing Impact like taking. Oh uh, yeah, it, it uh does some damage for a single fighting. It does forty it for the pre evolution. Twice. Yeah, it it attacks twice. Yeah. You yeah, it, twice if you're ground type. That's why. It yeah, fighting. Yeah, you got those uh focus sashes. Dark type doesn't be. Oh boy. Fight. Nothing that like one shotting. Strong, Literally right? everything is a one prizer. Don't you still get bodied by BB guns? Not as <laughs> hard because you get to attack twice. <laughs> yeah, you get to attack twice. Can you, wait, do you have to Can attack twice? Shot them with a sword because it has one fish. Uh, no, you one shot it. You have uh the it's fighting type, so you have strong energy, diancy, all that stuff. Okay. So you can kill their okay. guy and then deal damage to the bench. Okay, seems good. Yep. All right, so That's exactly um, what it is. Something I've been theorizing about is a uh, quad hoopa. You need another attack <laughs> to deal with non GX dudes, but so just hoopa spear you destroy tomb. turbo dark once you kill their singular view and their hoopa. You could like lost zone their um their guzzlord guy with Lugia GX and then you just need like some other attacker <laughs> to deal with non GX dudes. You could go with spear tomb. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> All right, anybody All right, got no. anything else? Wait, yeah, I'm going to take this. Okay, so oh, Doll, I think Doll, like, as a real deck, Dolls is probably okay. But if we're just talking about, like, random stuff, <laughs> real. I have to go to my boy Gibby, bro. Pyro Miss Mag low-key might actually be okay-ish, kind of. And then what's, there was some, oh, Steelix is the other one. Both of those decks are like, What does that do? Steelix it's discards not, Pokemon so, with four retreat and does 50 times. Isn't that just yeah. the same as like our Armaldo, but mean? worse? Yeah. <laughs> what does that do? It's, uh, you discard things with four retreat and it does 50 per. So you have like, you you have certain like set of cards you can do with your return. Discard like big grass for retreaters and then revitalize. How much back. does the attack cost? A triple XL. Uh, DCE. Oh, DCE. In standard, it's a triple XL. How am I getting yeah. these cards in my hand? This sounds Lure awful. ball, bud. Grovile. Search them out. Yeah, that's it. You, you Grovile for like four retreaters. And then you can revitalize them. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Pokemania. <laughs> oh, Dex Okay, Dex Boss. Wait, what? Pokemaniac, search your deck for like four Pokemon, right? Three or four? It's three with four retreat. Oh, it's, yeah. this... that's a bust. That's 150 damage. Yeah, and one card. It's a supporter, though. <laughs> this sounds terrible. All right. It's okay. And... <laughs> he said it was like okay ish. Any, any I feel like every deck. Know? Every deck is just kind of okay, or like every deck is kind of. That's bad. how I feel, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Steelix could be as good as other decks, to be honest. I feel like every deck except Turbo Dark and Mew are okay, <laughs> and everything. Yeah, those are the two I feel like that you should watch out for this weekend. Yeah, all right. You should try to beat those. Beat Turbo oh. Dark, beat Mew, probably yep. beat Zorgon too. Yeah. Well, all right, we're good. We're going to wrap it up here. Would you guys like to give any shout-outs to anybody? Uh, you can go ahead. We'll do the grant order for this one. No, bro. Uh, shout-out Lakeland Nightshade, all the homies. Uh, I don't know. Just shout-out, like, I'm, I'm staying with Jackson, and I'm staying with a couple other people, so I'm excited for that. Um, that's about it, I guess. Uh, I'm a free agent, but you can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas Moffat, too. Mm -hmm. Follow my Twitter at Sandman seven six five four three two one. Wait, I forgot about my Twitter. Too. <laughs> and shout follow out the group Twitter. chat HP Explat. Follow my Twitter Grant underscore Hayes TCG. I'm not active on Twitter, but you can follow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, my uh, group chats and uh, all of uh, the the people I'm staying with and all that. Thanks, guys. All right, and once again, I'd like to uh, shout out Rock Games LLC and Guardian Gaming TCG. Make sure to use code RUDY10 for 10% off of your next purchase at Guardian Games. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know how you would possibly enjoy this, but hopefully you did. Have a good night, and I'll see you next time.